When people embrace Islam, how do we treat them? When people embrace Islam and you move beyond the Shahada clip and the takbir and it's done, how many disenfranchised converts do we have? People that leave Islam shortly after they come into it because they're going to risk family isolation, lose their social capital, lose everything that they have. And the community that hugged them when they came in is nowhere to be found. That's not what the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to do. And by the way, the Prophet ﷺ understands that convert care is more than just the physical part. It's more than just the sustenance part. The Prophet ﷺ also considers Salman from the Muhajireen. He pairs him, or he considers him from the Muhajireen. Remember, there were the Muhajireen from Mecca, the migrants from Mecca, the Ansar, the helpers in Medina. Salman is the outcast here, right? The Prophet ﷺ says, you're from the Muhajireen. And on top of that, Salman anhu is going to get paired with one of the Ansar, just like the Muhajireen. The Prophet ﷺ also tells him that you have the reward of Badr and Uhud. You are considered from Ahlu Badr, because Ahlu Badr have a special rank, because you were held back against your will. So he's got the reward. And the Prophet ﷺ does not just say, all right, let me find some Ansari to throw him with. Let's find the average Joe amongst the Ansar and give him this weird Persian convert that doesn't really fit in with anyone. Who does the Prophet ﷺ pair him off with? Does anyone know? It's a famous story. The Prophet ﷺ puts him in the house of Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Darda is considered one of the scholars and one of the worshippers of the Sahaba. Now all of the companions had ilm and ibadah. But Abu Darda is considered from the muftis of the companions. He's considered one of the most knowledgeable. The Prophet ﷺ knows that Salman anhu is a heavyweight. He's a scholar of multiple religions already. He's a abid, he's a worshipper. He needs someone to teach him the religion that's on his level. So the Prophet ﷺ pairs him off with a alim abid, a scholar and a worshipper and Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Salman radiallahu anhu shows up in the house of Abu Darda. All right, Salman the Persian is moving into your house. Here's the thing now. This is before the ayat of hijab were revealed. Salman meets Umm Darda, the wife of Abu Darda. And she's got beat up clothes. Salman looks at her and he says, what's, what's going on? What's your issue? And she says, your brother Abu Darda has no need for this world or care for this world. Meaning he's an ascetic. He's busy with his religion. He doesn't really have time for his family. Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu hates extremism because he grew up in it, right? He grew up in ghulu and ibadah. He grew up in that type of, of, of indulgence in worship, extremes in worship. He grew up in that culture. And Salman radiallahu anhu hated what he saw. So when Abu Darda gets home, Abu Darda prepares some food for Salman. He gives him the food to eat. Abu Darda is fasting. Salman says, eat with me. Abu Darda says, I'm fasting. He said, eat with me. The right of the guest is that you should eat with me if I'm asking you to eat with me. So he forces Abu Darda to break his fast. At night, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu gets up from the very beginning of the night to start his worship all night long. Salman radiallahu anhu goes and he says, go to sleep. Who's this guest? Where did you come from, right? It's my house. He says, go to sleep. He says, I want to pray. He said, your wife has a right upon you. Go to sleep. So Salman sends him off to his room. He goes to sleep. And then when the last part of the night comes, Salman knocks, tells Abu Darda, all right, let's get up and pray now. So they pray together. And as they finish their prayer, Abu Darda is really regretting this pairing choice, right? Like, <laughs> this is not okay, you know? Who's this person that the Prophet ﷺ put in my house that tells me when to eat, sleep, and pray, you know? So when they finish, Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to me, Ya Abu Darda, Abu, Abu Darda, so they finished praying their qiyam. He said, Inna li nafsika alayka haqqa, wa li ahlika alayka haqqa, وَلِرَبِّكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّهُ Oh Abu Darda, 
Verily, yourself has a right upon you. Your family has a right upon you. Your Lord has a right upon you. So give each one of them their due right. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes to the Prophet in the morning to complain about Salman. <laughs> All right? And you know what the Prophet says? He says, Sadaqa Salman, Sadaqa Salman, Sadaqa Salman, Salman afqahu mink. He said, Salman has told the truth. Salman has told the truth. Salman has told the truth. Salman understands the religion better than you. All right? I know, that's... Oh, that, that was just trying to host Salman, right? Now, here's the thing. If it makes you feel better, Abu Darda is the one who narrated the hadith, right? <laughs> so it's not like... What is this? Again, Salman, radiallahu anhu, though he was not trained in the sharia of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet, Salman understood the spirit of God's divine revelation and legislation, and he knew this is not it. That what Allah reveals is not this. This is not the way of the Abrahamic way, al Hanifiya to Samha, the easy monotheistic way. This does not look like what I know is the way of Allah through Ibrahim Islam and Isa Islam and Muhammad Islam. This isn't it, right? Salman had a balance and an understanding of religion that rivaled a man who was already considered a mufti amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.